Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back. Thank you for joining us. Today, we are proud to present our next speaker, Manisha Aurora and Liam Yu with ServiceNow. Please give them a warm welcome. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. So uh, today we're going to have a little conversation about uh, you know, how we can help you accelerate your experiences with uh, AWS and how ServiceNow can allow you to do that in a way that's going to ensure the enterprise quality that you need. We'll, uh, we'll start off by discussing a little bit about like, what's happening in there that's going to make that makes sense for why this is important and uh, why, why you want to uh, think about the ServiceNow approach. Then we'll go into sort of the areas of, uh, of IT service management and IT operations and how they both need to work together very well for that transformation, how we can help you there. And then the better together of the AWS experience itself and how you know, we can actually, we've been working with AWS you know, very closely to ensure that that, uh, that control and that governance is made available to you without compromising the value uh, and the changes in, that you want to make inside a native AWS experience. I like to throw this up here because it's true. This, this, this is actually published a long time ago, but, but the idea that you know, everyone wants something fast or yesterday, and that that expectation is something that is, IT organizations are living with on a daily basis is not really a, a faraway joke. It really is through experience today. So what does that mean? Uh, we, we do this, uh, by the way, across up and down customers uh, uh, worldwide. We're a large organization that spends a lot of time looking at not just you know, uh, customers' needs from a IT environment, but how those translate, those service management and those IT operation needs translate into a business. And so we have a lot of experience around different types of businesses and what they need uh, in order to make, make sure that that success is met inside their different industries whether that's governance and control within those industries, or whether or not it's, it's about just you know, the security and the speed in which they need to deliver uh, those services. And there's some big trends that actually are driving a lot of this that you're all very familiar with. There's no organization today that doesn't live within the cloud or a hybrid environment in some way, shape, or form. But at the same time, you need to have a very competitive experience for your end users. And IT is becoming closer to that business experience than ever before. And the reason for that is obvious, right? You have this massive diversity and explosion of, 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 of devices and experiences that users want to have, or machine-to-machine -machine type experiences even. You have this ability to, that, that an expectation that cloud has to be adopted, it has to be adopted in a way that's going to ensure that you're competitive and not be disruptive in your own systems, right? It has to be a, consumed and delivered with high availability. It has to be something that you're, you're able to match your needs, whether it was in an infrastructure or in a cloud. It shouldn't matter to, to your organization. And then the last is you have the security, you have the security needs that your, your organization has, and you have the desire for development uh, organizations to work very close to the business to give that native experience that, that you want. And AWS is a critical area where those experiences are really defined for the developers. And they don't want to compromise. And so it's very important that you're beco you become an enabler to the IT, as an IT organization, to those developers. And the developers have a very easy way of moving, in, moving things into the organization or delivering those services quickly without compromising or going outside uh, IT. But if you don't have the systems in place to do it in a more ubiquitous way, a collective way, you, you tend to have g issues or gaps within the visibility of that. Not just for IT, but also for the developers and also for end users, ultimately. You also have this need to ensure that reliability more than ever before. I mean, cloud is about being flexible and agile, but it's also about ensuring that you have the right, the right availability to the right users and that that is very reliable to your business. This is particularly true in environments where, where cloud plays a role because we're not always talking about just the ex experience of a user of your organization. We're talking about all kinds of users, partners, customers, and a collective set of employees or, or, or users in, the, in your environments. We also see that if it's done with systems that aren't prepared for it, that these siloed approaches can be disruptive in terms of resolutions or resolving issues in a way that customers today experience things. They want a consumer experience even if they are inside an organization where, they, uh, where they're where delivering an enterprise application or service. So what we do at a very high level at ServiceNow is ensure that all of that is brought together in a very collective stream so that it's automated. The fashion is at an enterprise level with quality around your governance. You're in control in terms of what those, uh, those, those experiences are going to be. 
but at the same time, our platform fundamentally facilitates all the unique variety that you're going to need or the unique uh, ability to deliver services that will help you stay competitive. And we do this because throughout our, our platform approach, we really have a way of applying capabilities across all these different diversities. So if you have an experience in AWS, and multiple experiences where you, you want it to be unique and ensure that competitiveness in terms of the application, you don't compromise on how a security control gets implemented, in a you know, and you don't have, a, have to you know, deliver that uniquely in the organization or create ex exceptions. You have a way to onboard that service to users in an automated way without users having to go through a manual process to do it, or IT operations having to, to use that in a way that, that employs it in a manual process. We also allow you to customize that experience at the IT operations level so that you're, you're doing so uh, with all the different diversity of IT operations tools, but you're not, you're not giving up a standard or, or creating silos and how those those tools need to be implemented. This gives you uh, a way of delivering, a framework of delivering your applications without having to worry that it, they're going to be out of compliance, that they're not going to uh, uh, be available, and that they, uh, they will always, you'll always have the visibility that you need. So how do we do this? Well, in many ways, there's kind of two centers of excellence within an IT uh, group that are really important work, that work together. The first is around the front end, around the service side which many of you may be familiar with, the, uh, you know, we actually help that experience become a, a ubiquitous uh, and, and, and customized experience for your users. But under that, a lot is coming together to ensure that those resources that are being used by IT are always up to, up to date, that they're, they're, they're being uh, monitored in a way that's collective or holistic, um, for, and that they can be a center of, uh, uh, or source of action for IT, right? Not just a record. From an operations side, we give the opportunity for all the goodness of the center of excellence that's being done in your organizations to work together with that uh, service environment. So the two really co collectively help each other. And they do so in a way that doesn't require a number of different types of approaches. A single set of approach that, that actually allows you to continue managing governance. If, if new resources come into the operational portfolio in your IT organization, they are easily and automatically recognized within the service side. If events and alerts go, going back and forth are, are exchanged, that this is done in a real-time and automated fashion so that the, the users can actually get the information they need about an incident that might come up immediately. But then Ops is actually leveraging all the goodness around improving or resol resolving that in a way that, that is always going to be uh, uh, delivered in a standard approach regardless of the underlying resource, which is key. That gives you the ability to have all the variety that you want. And then lastly, any changes or events that come up, same thing. That, that exchange is done both on the service side as well as the operations side so that everyone's singing from the same hymn book. And oftentimes, we talk to customers about how they have to cobble these, these, these together. And, 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 and doing so creates gaps or latencies. We want to make sure that you have one way of doing it. If you have other reports and other things, that also helps to actually be brought into that central world. So you can leverage the management tools you have today without actually you know, uh, uh, limiting those management tools the way you're using them. I'm going to pass it to Manisha, and we'll give you a quick overview of what the integration is and what it looks like on AWS. All right, thanks, Liam. So we spent some time talking about the importance of bringing together your IT service management team, your cloud operations team. So we worked with our partners at AWS and their engineering side, and we've created a number of integrations across the board to make it easier to manage your AWS cloud migrations and lifecycle management once you're in the cloud. So I'm going to go right to left on this one. The first integration I'm going to talk about is very quickly, if, you have, if you're a customer today of AWS managed services, you can look at all your incidents, requests, and changes from within the ServiceNow UI. And then from our cloud management product, we've integrated with AWS to make it really easy to do provisioning. So as an end user, a line of business uh, developer, you could go into the ServiceNow service catalog and have access to the CloudFormation templates or uh, catalog items to which you personally have access to. So if I'm in central IT, I want to make sure that you as an application developer have 
templates that uh, meet my security policy, my compliance policies, and that you're able to take uh, to get the resource you need quickly, but securely. So you could go to the catalog, you could find what you need, and then go and have it deployed uh, automatically. If, uh, if your organization needs a set of approvals and notifications, we can also do that from the ServiceNow side. Once something is provisioned, uh, the, uh, we will be able to discover it back into the ServiceNow CMDB. And I want to stress the importance of the CMDB here. So today, most of your companies have a CMDB, a configuration management database, on-prem that shows you all your on-prem resources, your servers, your load balancers, your databases, applications, and services. The neat thing about the ServiceNow integration here is now you get that same view with your AWS resources. So you have a holistic picture of your IT estate from one place. When you start looking at that, now you have a picture of what you own. The cool thing is with our business service maps, you can see how these resources are connected to each other. So now you could say, my payroll service has these web servers, these databases, these network gear things, um, all associated with it. And if we start seeing CloudWatch alarms come through against, let's say, that load balancer over there, we can show you that this is the business service that's impacted. Since our configuration management database also has non-discoverable data, like cost center and owner and business service that it's associated to, you're able to look and see, uh, do the right level of notification and tell the service owner or end users that there may be a problem or there is a problem. Once you have that view and the notifications, we also have the ability to do remediation. So you can put in the change request and go and either proactively or reactively remediate issues in your environments. And then over on the far side, we're able to pull billing data from, um, from AWS and show it against those non-discoverable data that's in the CMDB. So now you can look at what groups are using what resources, how are they doing against um, what you expected, and you could start doing a little more analysis around that side of the house. I think you're, yeah. I think, try now. Oh, try now. That, this business view that Manish is talking about is important because today, you know, this, this view into their re your resources is usually something that IT has to kind of cobble together a little bit to see which businesses are ultimately getting impacted. But if you can immediately understand where those impacts are from a business perspective, it helps prioritize the service. Yep. So the other thing I wanted to mention is uh, we, have, we are working on an integration between the AWS service catalog and our cloud management product so that you could curate your products and portfolios of the AWS service catalog, make them available in our uh, ServiceNow catalog so you get all the benefits of the governance and workflow from ServiceNow while being able to have that IT control and curation that's available in the uh, AWS service catalog. So we're working on that for the future. To, and then the last thing I wanted to mention is, I talked a lot about these integrations. Why should you care? So we have a lot of people who are really good at AWS. And we have a lot of people who are really good at ServiceNow. Today, if you have uh, these people kind of working together, you might end up with people who have to swivel seat and learn to use both interfaces. We're trying to eliminate some of that friction. If you're an AWS person, go nuts. Go deep, do that. If you live at ServiceNow, more power to you. We want to create automated bi-directional connections between the two so that you could do your job better um, without having to go through all that extra work. And let's see. So you allowing you to do this basically ex accelerates or speeds up that AWS service into a first class citizen for enterprise because now you know it's governed, you know it's in control, but you have full visibility of the health, you have full visibility of, of what those services are related to. Right, so we're going to leave you with a couple takeaways here. You know, what's really important is that you have a choice to make the changes you want from an, uh, in your organization without compromising the, the, the quality of service from an operations side or security or in terms of uh, delivering uh, that experience to end users. You want to have a, a, a world where any of the improvements you make within the service side, they co coexist and they work together within the operations side selectively. So operations get, you know, it can leverage all the changes, all the tools that they need, and they can do so with service management in mind and they work together. And that, that uh, it can be extended to the cloud regardless of the underlying service underneath and, and the ap application developers do not have to worry about that world so much anymore. 
And then the last is, this experience provides you with a way of delivering AWS. If you're a developer, you go crazy, as Manisha says, you can build and create and deliver stuff quickly. You don't have to go outside of IT anymore. You have a way of easily and quickly delivering that service with the right IT quality the operations teams want without guessing or, or, or worrying about that. So if you want more information, come visit our booth. We're 1640 over that way. Right, and we have, of course, a, uh, a giveaway, or I should say a contest that's, uh, that's going on now. So please come uh, and participate with that. We'd love to have you. Thank you. Thank you.